Hey everybody, Mary McCarthy here with the third edition of the Small Language Model Show, the SLM Show. I think I said that correctly. In every show, I've made like some little error in how I write or say the show, but third time is the charm, the Small Language Model Show. Um, I am your co-host here in Los Angeles, and I'm joined by the other co-host, Mark McQuaid, who's over in Miami. And um, as most shows, we have Charles Goddard, our senior research engineer and founder of MergeKit, and today a very special guest, Maya Akeem, an AI researcher who is based in Austin. So hey, everybody. Hey, thank you for having me here. We're thrilled to have you. So um, we're going to first chat with Charles about uh, model merging. He's on a bit of a deadline. Um, he's got to leave after 50 minutes because he's heading out to Boston because he's going to speak at a big AI summit at MIT tomorrow um, talking about what else, merge kit and model merging. Um, so we're going to start with just asking him for you know the latest on his research and merge kit and that whole world. Um, and then we'll shift over to talking to Maya about um, her own work and experimentation with merge kit. So Mark, you want to dive in and and get get us going on uh on the model merging yeah i mean i guess it's, it'll be good just for charles to kind of give a give an update on where what, what's going on in his world our world with with uh merging and some of the new things we're working on um be great for for charles to to talk about some of that stuff and i i think we we may have to we may have to change the name of the show as well because i feel like i get a lot of a lot of questions on like wait does merging only work on small models it's like no no not at all not at all so we, may, we, we, although you know, optimally from a, from a you know a perspective of you know customers uh, running models, small models is better for them because it's cheaper, it's easier in infra, it's less complex. But no, merging is not uh, dedicated just for small. I agree with these sort of emerging categories and part of the category we're creating, there's still some determination in what the what the right keywords are, whether or not they're easy to say and whether or not logically they make sense. So to us, small language model makes sense, but it, it might be too limiting. So, um, but yeah, that's that's a topic for another day and a topic for some polls that we'll put out to all of you. Yeah, so I mean, there's, there's been a lot going on in MergeKit lately. Uh, well, one of the things that landed recently is uh, to the MOE merging capability uh, that's been in MergeKit for a long time. I've recently added some new output architectures to that, including the uh, the Quen2 MOE architecture and the DeepSeek MOE. So that's, that's a fun thing that, that people can play with now if they're interested. We also have a couple of new merging methods come in. Uh, I have a, a PR that'll come in very shortly for a, a new method called model breadcrumbs, which is you know, another uh, interesting extension of task arithmetic. Uh, so look forward to that. Probably the most exciting thing going on right now is uh, evolutionary model merging. And I'm sure many people interested in the topic of model merging have read uh, Sakana AI's recent paper on uh, where they, they introduced this approach for evolutionary uh, genetic algorithm based merging of models to optimize you know, non differentiable objectives. So uh, I have an implementation of this that will be coming into MergeKit very soon. I'm, I'm writing the documentation as we speak. And that's probably what I'm most excited about right now. Yes, I agree. That is uh, the most exciting piece on my side too. I think that is definitely um, we, we gave it a we gave it a test run yesterday, uh, Charles and I, for uh, for, for our, one of our models. Uh, we have a patent model uh, that we uh, decided to to give the new uh, the new uh, evolutionary model merging method that's uh, going into merge kit um, a trial with, and it's it's fantastic. It's absolutely game changing. So I can't wait till we drop that into merge kit, um, and I can't wait till the community starts playing with it. I know that the um, merge kit GUI was launched last week on Hugging Face. So what would have been the reactions to that? I see Maya. I don't know if she's played around with it. Um, yes, of course. <laughs> I had to. How is it? How is it to use? Yeah, go ahead. Either one, chime in. I was going to say, I'll jump in first, Charles, and then you can kind of talk about it. But um, huge shout out to Hugging Face, right? So Hugging Face actually built it, right? Essentially, like we, we had the back end scripts for it. Um, by you know in no means am i an expert in spaces or gradio um so hugging face jumped in and actually built it a uh, huge shout out to julian uh shaman who's one of the co-founders there who's a friend of mine since i was at hugging face um, who said you know what i'll build it for you and, and he had a uh, you know him and one of his guys jumped in and, and built the whole space so um shout out there and then they they coincidentally spilled the secondary space to auto generate your uh config file uh, so it really helps out uh, so yeah, I mean, 
fantastic uh, work, you know, involving Hug and Kiss in the community. And it's been, you know, it's been a huge hit so far. But go ahead, Charles. Yeah, well, I mean, not too much to add to that. I'm very excited about it just because, you know, Merge Kit is very accessible for a, a command line tool, primarily run on Linux and used for working with language models. Uh, but it can't compare to something like the Merge Kit GUI that, that we've done with Hugging Face, where basically you, you can, you know, type into a text box, press a button and receive your merge and not have to set up a virtual machine or anything. So I'm really excited to see what people do with it now that, you know, you don't have to think about uh, orchestrating hardware and, and, and spinning up. You, you can just press a button and then do it. And Maya, as a user, you can confirm it's it's as easy as they claim to use. Oh yeah, they're not lying. That's for sure. It's super easy. Uh, before that, there was uh, Maxine Lebon's uh, lazy merge kit, which reminds me of this. It was like a Google Collab notebook, and it was super easy to merge models uh, through it. Uh, it was really the lazy way. But uh, now I think that this is even more accessible. It's just um, you know there's a space and that's it. I do have one question though because I kind of tried ambitiously to merge some giant models and I couldn't do it. <laughs> so, you know, is there like a limit or something? Uh, yeah, I mean, Charles, I can jump in there because, um, so it was running on uh, uh, two A10s, uh, you know, which are not huge. Uh, yesterday I had Huggy Fist bump it up to a single A100. Um, so it is bigger now. Um, and the uh, shout out to Huggy Fist, they're actually sponsoring the space and paying for the compute. So, um, yeah, we had some limits. We had some people say, you know, when they tried to merge to 13 billion parameter models, they were getting some CUDA errors. So we did up it. So it should help. But it, yeah, I mean, Charles, you could probably speak to what the limits probably sit out of the A100. Yeah. So and there are some settings on the back end that, that I'm going to look at tweaking as well to, to make sure it can work with as large things as possible. But I, I would not expect to be able to merge 70 billion parameter models, for example. Uh, but Anywhere below that should be fine now. Uh, you should be able to do you know, 7, 13, 33, uh, anything in that range. What about maybe like five smaller 7 billion parameter models? What would it be with their ties or something like that? I, I expect that should work now. Uh, if it mm -hmm. doesn't, let me know and I'll see if I can you know, get it working. But OK. It we have a, a question from a viewer, Rohan K, who says, I often think about merging smaller models. I'd love to see if there's an example where we merge different model skills into one. Uh, Rohan, when you say different model skills, what do you mean by skills? Like different model, uh, I'll let you kind of write again on what you mean by skills. Because what, reading that, I think you mean like two different models in the sense of what they're good at. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe you mean different architectures or something. Yeah. So just give us some more, some more details there and then we can yeah. respond to that, Rohan. And Maya, if you, if, if, if you want to merge 70 billion parameter models, all you got to do is, is, is put it, uh, hit me up and I can tell Hugging Face the community wants it because they have plenty of compute. So we'll, <laughs> we'll bust it up to a, we'll bust it up to an eight node A100 or something or an H100. We've got plenty of compute. Sure, I can find some people. I can recruit some people as well. So we'll just master them. No problem. That's good. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, and Charles, your your talk tomorrow on model merging at MIT. That's um, is it going to get into some of this latest research, or is it more of just an intro to kind of folks who aren't yet you know deep in it, like everybody here? Exactly. It's going to be more of an introductory talk. It's a relatively short uh, space. So I'll be going over, you know, model merging as a high level concept to why you'd want to do it and, and how you can get into it. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to, you know, meet up with people there and then talk details if, if you want to. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And Mark, what about your, have you done some merges lately? Uh, always, but um, definitely the evolutionary <laughs> model merge yesterday was uh, the highlight of my day. I can't wait till we, we drop this, right? Because when Sakana dropped the paper, I mean, great, great on Sakana, right? They dropped the paper. Um, it showed how you have this, you know, fantastic new uh, way with this evolutionary algorithm to, to merge models and choose the best path and into the best config file. And, um, but they didn't release the code, right? They released the, the models, uh, they released the evals but they didn't release the code. So I think the community has been, uh, we've, I mean, we've had comments and, and, uh, on MergeKit, right? People asking, you know, are you guys working on this evolutionary model merging? When's it coming? 
Um, so the community loved the paper that Sakana dropped. They just wanted more to, to be able to sink their you know hands on it and play with it. Um, so I can't wait till we do that. We drop it and let the let the community go wild on on testing it out. Although it does require some some GPUs, uh, but but it is absolutely always a well challenge. Worth it. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. So I think that we're going to release um, everything we're talking about here on Monday, um, both on GitHub and on the blog. So um, I don't want to hold you any of you to that deadline, but for people coming in and checking in, it should be here on Monday. Um, Charles, uh, you are free to go off on your travels whenever you want. So if, if Charles drops off, um, you guys know why. And uh, we'll shift over to, uh, to to going a bit deeper with Maya on her work. Um, Maya, as we mentioned, you did a, a video on model merging, what you call model blending. But I hope you've adopted the term that we're using now yeah. <laughs> um, that went pretty viral. Uh, which a lot of your videos do really well, but I, I do think this is one of your, your top ranking videos. Um, let's back into a little bit. Who are you? How did you get into this AI research? Uh, well, so um, I am actually a graduate architect, like building architect, and I worked for eight years in that field. I also uh, kind of um, dabbled a little bit in game design, uh, but that was it. So it was not related to machine learning at all. And in 2022, I decided to try out uh, some diffusion models to hopefully automate some part of my uh, work that I have that I had as an architect at the time. I was trying to generate some textures mostly, uh, and uh, it didn't really go that well. And then I realized that there's a gap between like what uh, how these models are marketed and what they can do and it's like the whole knowledge wasn't that accessible at the time i think so i um i decided to kind of research um diffusion models first uh, a little bit more but then chat gpt came out and then of course everyone became obsessed with it and then i decided to also research transformers and um as i was doing all of that I was also trying to make uh, videos where I talk about my journey and I share it with other people, and hopefully uh, to encourage them to also do their own research um, and get educated in the right way. Because I feel like a lot of the stuff in the space, in the AI space is just uh, hype. Uh, and uh, it, I think it's ultimately going to damage the field more than anything. So yeah, that, that has been my journey. And yes, my last video was about model blending, <laughs> it's true. But there was a lot of, um, like uh, at the time, I think it was January when I was, I, I actually uh, posted a poll on my YouTube channel and I asked people, um, would they like to see some uh, next video, would they like the next video to be about AI agents or crew AI or, <laughs> or, or uh, model bl blending and model blending. You can, you can say other brand names. We're totally, we're, we're, we're good at what we do when we, we're not intimidated by anyone else in the AI space. So feel free oh. to say those names. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't think about it. <laughs> no, no, no. Shout out to Crew AI. I watched your videos about them. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. And anyway, everyone voted for model blending. Um, and I was like, okay, fine. Let's, it seems like everyone wants to see that video. So I made it and uh, yeah. That's awesome. That's amazing. Um, and so what would have been the sort of when you put out a video like that, um, again, you got like 30,000 views, a lot of comments. Did that sort of push you to experiment further with with model merging? Sort of the, um, the comments and the reaction? Yes, because I actually think that a lot of uh, view of the viewers posted really interesting questions. And actually, that was one of my questions. Uh, can you merge uh, like multi-model mo uh, models? Because, uh, and I think that this research, uh, I, I forgot how it's pronounced, Sakuna, right? So I think that they refer to that, right? So that's an interesting question. Or obviously it's not possible to merge models with different architectures at, the, at this moment, but I hopefully it will be. So I'm kind of curious and I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the field. Sorry, I was yeah. there. Yeah, um, yeah, that's great. I mean, you obviously have a, a big YouTube following. Um, so it's good to kind of hear the community and then, you know, do what, what they're, what they're asking for, right. In that sense. So I'd be curious to see if, um, if there's more interest and excitement on kind of taking model merging model blending further, right. Uh, which is kind of what Sakana did with their, with their paper release. Yeah. Well, I just want to clarify I was 
also personally interested in model merging because, I, and this might be a wrong thing to say, but I saw it as a way to like, a hacky way to avoid fine tuning. I, yeah. My assumption was like, if I could find a couple of models that I, I, I like the way that they sort of like sound or write, writing style, then I can merge them and then I can have a model instead of like having to fine tune a model to sound like me. And I think that based on the comments that I get, I, I think that the majority of my viewers are, are kind of trying to in a way fine tune models to sound like them and they're really struggling because you need a good data set, you need a lot of, uh, you know, like a GPU compute power. So it's it, all of these things, I, I kind of saw model merging as a way to like avoid that entirely. It could be wrong. But just no, you're, you're, we're actually doing a, some research on that. We're going to be releasing a paper uh, soon on, you know, uh, the comparison of you know, getting a, a base model and, and then doing the merge versus then merging a, that same model with a chat model um, and seeing essentially if you can bypass the uh, the need to instruction fine tune or DPO, um, the, the base model, right? Which is huge, right? If you can avoid, you know, instruction tuning or DPO, uh, a lot of people don't have, you know, QA pairs and, and uh, preference data sets, right? So um, yeah, the initial results have been really good, uh, you know, that the, the, the performance of the model when doing, you know, say a, a full DPO train um, is not that much better as if you just merge with a great DPO chat model, right? So, um, and we'll, yeah, we're, we're releasing it on a couple different domain benchmarks, like one being legal, uh, another one being medical, I believe. Um, so yeah, it's definitely an active area of research because in our product, right, you know, obviously we're doing great things in the open source community, but we also have a product, right? And in our product, one thing that we have in there is, you know, we have, continual pre-training and model merging. We think the pair of those is really the, the powerful piece, not just merging, but actually doing, you know, merging when you do a continual pre-train first. Um, but then having the ability to do SFT as well as we have in the product. And it's like, can we remove that, right? Can we remove that layer completely where you don't need SFT and you just literally can do a, you know, a continual pre-train and then a merge and then you're done. You have a great model. So um, yeah, something we're, we're actively, actively researching. So I'm glad you brought that up. Oh, that's great. Uh, I, I I think that fine tuning was marketed as this accessible thing that everyone can do. And uh, I think that in that way, a lot of people feel disappointed. Like um, they realize that it's not that easy to actually fine tune anything, uh, even though there are a lot of services that are offering that. And I, I, I believe that, you know, in a way, I, I personally, for my use case, found found a way to to bypass it uh, with, with model merging. I, I, and, it's really funny. Uh, model merging is so addictive. I was thinking about it. I remember one evening, I think it was like midnight and I was so tired. I was merging for like hours, <laughs> trying out different models. And I just thought to myself, just one more model merge, just one more. It, it's, I sounded like a smoker who's trying to leave, you know, cigarettes. Like, yeah. but it's, it's just so addictive because you you can see the results immediately. You can experiment, and I, I really like that fun aspect of it as well. Hey, that, that's the best commercial we could ever get for model merging, right there. Um, <laughs> maybe we'll find a healthier addiction to use. <laughs> yeah, but that's pretty incredible. Amazing. Actually, is your videos? Um, again, I'm pretty deep working with RC. I'm pretty deep in in this universe myself, even if I'm not doing the any of the coding. And it was your videos. I was going through some of them last night that kind of made me want to dip my hand in and and try some of this myself. Because um, as as a, as a marketer, I've avoided using AI tools. And when the 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 ease with which you explain all of this, I was like, maybe it's time for me to you know. Oh, um, that's so good to hear. Uh, that's an AI-generated newsletter going. No promises, Mark, uh, but <laughs> soon we should have an AI-generated newsletter. Um, so, so it's yeah, it's it's powerful work you're doing, obviously in the open source community, and then even helping to grow that, um, which is which is amazing. I have a question for both of you um, as um, as Merge Kit users. Um, what 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 would you like to see next from Merge Kit? Obviously, we're having the drop on Monday, but is there anything else we're like, oh, I wish it could do this or that? Um, well, I actually, I, I feel very excited about this new research paper that you're about to publish, new, new merge methods, right? I think that uh, I got so excited when I heard about it. Uh, I cannot think of anything 
else i am just more methods i'm excited about it i want to see I, I want to like compare models i want to merge same models and see how they compare when they're merged with different methods that's kind of what i'm excited about yeah awesome yeah and on my side i mean obviously the evolutionary model merge stuff is is dropping really exciting for that uh it's going to be very big i, I you know I, I, what you said maya about people just kind of you know um you know, you get addicted to merging, right? You just merge models and then, you know, you just keep merging, right? And it, it, it'll probably be worse with the evolutionary model merge stuff because the way you have it, the way it, it works is um, you actually use the the algorithm when you do a merge, before you do a merge, and it actually does a merge, eval, merge, eval, merge, eval, okay? Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, you it spits out your most optimal config file based on the models you chose, right? So... Uh, I don't know how much you've played with the parameters from within the config file. A lot of people don't play with them too much, right? They just kind of use the default. Um, but the config files that this thing spits out, is like, it's like unbelievable, right? So um, you kind of have, uh, you know, it's that same sense of what you were saying earlier of the, the addiction to merging, but you're actually seeing it in the insane config file that it spits out based on this algorithm. Um, so that piece, as well, I'll mention that obviously... You know, as I said, you know, it requires a lot of GPUs to do that. When you do eval merge, eval merge, eval merge, right? It, it requires GPUs. Um, so we are open sourcing it, but we're also putting we're also putting it in our product. So we'll have you know a cluster of GPUs behind it that you will be able to utilize, and we won't expect you to uh, you know go out and, and get the uh, get the GPUs yourself, right? So we're we're also going to have that. Um, but the biggest and most exciting thing after that, to me which we are actively working on always, it is kind of the North Star, is the ability to merge different size models and different architectures, right? And um, we kind of have a backwards way of doing it right now, right? Where you can, you know, you can take uh, like Mistral 7B as an example, you can use the pass-through method and you can extend it to say 9 billion parameters, 10 billion parameters, and then you can train only the new parameters and freeze the rest. Uh, so it's kind of a backwards way of, of you know, uh, training a small model, merging with a larger model. Um, but the absolute goal is, hey, I'm going to train a 1 billion parameter model, and then I'm going to merge it with a 70 billion parameter model, right? And then what that does, it truly unlocks the true value of, you know, at that point, you know, training a 1 billion parameter model is a fraction of the cost of what it is to train a 70 billion parameter model. And your end result is the same because you've done a merge, right? Um, as well as different architectures. So imagine merging Llama with Mistral or Gemma with Mistral, right? These things you can't do right now. It's very hard. Uh, so those things. Um, actually, I'll give you a third one. Merging MOEs. Merging MOEs is very, like, it's, it's even hard to fine tune MOEs at this moment, yeah. right? Because there's just not a lot of MOEs out there that are fine tuned. Uh, we're actively fine tuning MOEs, making it easy to fine tune them. And then we're actively doing merges, right? So um, those three pieces, probably with a shorter distance thing that's right in front of us, the MOE stuff, but long term is the different architectures and different sizes. Um, I'm going to bring in a question from a viewer here that uh, is sort of uh, related to your second point there. So um, can you explain more about what the same architecture means for merging to merge a model? Does it need to have the same number of parameters? Can we merge BERT with a GPT model? And continuing on that. Um, yeah, so so at, at present it's 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 yeah. pretty it's pretty straightforward, right? So you have to have the same architecture. So like uh, you know, if it's a Mistral based model, it has to be another Mistral model, right? So now you can merge, you know, a fine tuned version of Mistral with you know Mistral Instruct, right? Um, you know that way, but it has to be like the Mistral causal the causal architecture has to be Mistral. Uh, same with Llama. If you have Llama, it has to be Llama based model. Uh, and it, it does have to be the same size for a straight merge right now, right? Um, technically, I mean, you're going to only get good results if you have the same size. So if you're working with Mistral 7B, you can do Mistral 7B. If you're working with Mixtral, though, you could, you know, you could merge the MOE and Mixtral pretty easily. Um, so yeah, same architecture, same size. What we're what we're striving towards, and what I kind of mentioned there, on you know, you can you can backwards. Uh, work that with by extending a model, right? You pass through, extend, and then only train the, uh, the extended area, kind of like pruning the model in a way, um, except the other way, extending. Uh, and uh, and then obviously the, the North Star of like, no, I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to take 
Mistral 7B and I'm going to merge it with Quen 72, right? Like that is the day that happens is the day that I say we, we made it. So <laughs> that is absolutely our research uh, power in forward for. Got the whole, got the uh, big roadmap there. And I yep. think, and, and did you answer the second part of the question there, uh, Mark? What are the prerequisites of Once doing- Once two models are merged, is it yeah. necessary to train the resultant model for at least- No, no, it's not necessary to train. Uh, and Maya, you could probably speak to that. I don't want to keep talking, but obviously you've done a lot of merges. I don't, you probably never trained after you merged, right? No, no. I I have like very specific um, needs. Uh, I, I, I need a model that's very coherent, uh, has a coherent writing style, so to say, it's, which is surprisingly difficult to find sometimes. And I was just uh, kind of uh, playing around with various models, found a few that I like, and I just merged them, and I really like the result. And I uh, I use it, actually. I mean, the, the model that I, I merged, I, I use it, I quantized it, and I use it on my laptop all the time, so that's it. Awesome. And I'm going to put in the comments for people watching, um, obviously, your YouTube channel, your Twitter feed, which is also terrific. And um, you have a Discord. Is that right? What, I haven't joined yet. But um, what, oh, what, is, what do we do on your Discord? Is that is that sort of the same tone and topics as your YouTube channel? Yes, but oh, I'm so uh, I feel so guilty because I am not present. I'm such a boomer when it comes to Discord. I don't know how to use it. And then I get super like stressed out because I didn't log in for forever. And then I, because of that, I don't log in again. So it's not that active, but I'm trying to fix it. Yeah. Okay. So the main place to find you is, is on YouTube. And I'm curious, you're um, obviously we brought you on to go deep on model merging, um, but your, your um, research, you know, your AI research is more broadly, I would say, it seems to be going towards just an LLM focus. Do you, do you know what your next video is? Or you're in addition to continuing your model merging, merging research, like what else, what are your, what's your other big sort of topic you want to get into or explore? Well, I'd say that um, um, I have to follow what people are talking about in order to make relevant uh, content. And people seem to be really obsessed with AI agents. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess my, idea is to see how I can create agents with uh, open source models, uh, which is ultimately um, kind of the dream. And this is also what uh, uh, other people are, they're asking me to, to, to make a good, let's say, a team of agents to, to work that are built on top of open source models. So uh, a lot of the merging comes uh, from this need to, to create like a sort of say smart model that uh, has enough common sense reasoning to to be a good AI agent. So I think that this is the, for now, the direction that I'm going to go um, forward with. So, but I'm, I, I don't know if um, maybe you answered and I didn't hear you. Uh, what about the multi-model um, models like the with the vision? Do you have any plans for that? Because that's what people keep asking me also in the comments. Yeah, I mean, well, like, Merging itself was actually became popular in the vision space, right? With diffuser, with diffusion models, right? So, um, I mean, it's 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 a it, it, merging is capable from within, like vision models and obviously language models, uh, multimodality models. Um, I'm unsure where that stands. I'll have to ask Charles. I'm unsure where we we don't typically play too much in multimodality, but I'm sure it's coming, right? That's kind of the one of the next frontiers. Um, but that's a good question. I will, I will definitely ask, like, I don't, I don't believe any, uh, any of the architectures are supported at present, but I should ask Charles where, where that research stands. I I could, yeah, I, I could be wrong, but I think that they also have a lot of parameters, these models. So it's a little bit difficult to, to, to merge them. Right. Uh, that's why I think that, uh, the, the, the most popular uh, merges are for 7 billion parameter models. Yes. I actually, yeah, I, I, even when I wasn't using the lazy merge kit for Maxim LeBon, I was merging uh, models on my laptop. I just have a regular Mac laptop and it was fine. So uh, that's why it's so popular. Yeah, yeah, you can just, you know, you just merge on CPU, right? So that's, that makes it so much more powerful uh, when you start getting obviously into the 70 billion parameter models. I did a merge of, uh, like a Quen model, like a 72 billion with another, with a smog model, I believe it was, I believe. Um, it was heavy. It took, a, it took a while. It took a lot of, it took a lot of power. So it's definitely much easier on the 7 billion parameter. Oh, so Charles wrote in on the chat, on the roadmap. There you go. 
for vision models, but not for the moment. So he's, Charles says, we'll just bring it up here. Mm -hmm. Vision models are on the roadmap. We don't have a concrete timeline, but it's going to happen. But m just to be clear, multimodality is not yet on the roadmap, right? For us anyway. Uh, I think he probably means multimodality, but I could be wrong. Let's see if he's still oh, okay. Working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's see if he's okay. still working. Yeah. Okay, that's actually a great place to end on that topic because um, uh, whoever can figure out um, multimodality models, if you want to contribute it during the Merge Kit Hackathon, which we're launching later this week. <laughs> nice. if, if, someone, if someone can figure that out, they will get all three top prizes in one. Um, but we're not expecting anything quite that ambitious, um, but uh, we will be announcing later this week the RC Merge Kit Model Merging Hackathon. We'd love to have you obviously uh, uh, participate and um, you know get get some more additions to, to Merge Kit and um, get, get more people merging get or to use your words maya to get more people addicted to merging right <laughs> yeah. awesome, Great. Awesome. Well, th thank you for coming on this was amazing um you're welcome back anytime um and yeah thanks mark and uh, we'll see everybody in two weeks thanks, everyone. Bye. All right, bye